The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 18th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I can make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in. We'd love to hear from you. 877-927-664. It's the number you call in on. Now, if you have a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. Send it early, please. And in the subject hitting, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got basically all the U.S. industries trading to the upside. Flat NASDAQ, I'm sorry, flat New York Stock Exchange, it's off six points. The S&P is up 25 or six tenths percent, 52 for the Dow, 173 for the NASDAQ 100, five for the Russell, 81, that's 2.5% for the semis out there. Trendy's up 135 points. That's 1% move for them. Gold's off 1.5%, down 27 bucks. Silver's off 1.5%, that's 37 cents. Lights Recruit is off 81 penny, uh, 81, 8 tenths percent, that's 59 cents. 6.5% 6 move for natural gas, the upside, 15 pennies. Trade out at 251. And the 30-year Treasury down 27 ticks, 127.30 is the print there. Now, leave the charge dollar-wise the upside. You've got Synopsis up 30 bucks, nearly 8%. Netflix, 28 bucks, 8%. Lamb Research, 21 bucks, 4%. Asmill Holdings, 3%. 19 bucks into it, three and a half percent, three and three quarters percent. That's a $16 move. To the downside, it is Boot Barn down nine and a half dollars. That's a 13% move. You've got the Cigna Group down six bucks. That's a two and a half percent. Monroe is off 12%. That's a $6 move. Humana down five. Insulin Corp down five bucks as well. So we got plenty to look at, but let's begin by taking a look at where are we market breadth wise. So here when we take a look at the market breadth, here's for the S&P 500, and you can see we are bearish on the daily and the weekly, bullish on the 60 and 240. Roger asked, hey, Stevie, if we are turning bullish on the 60 and 240, is that the indication that uh, maybe we're going to get a change in trend? It could be. I don't know. Is it the uh, is it is it the time to come into a long position? Well, for that, I think we'll find the answer to that is no out there. You know, day trading, different thing. But here we do take a look at the S&P 500. It is not out of the woods. It's nowhere near out of the woods. It can get out of the woods. And the easy way to get out of the woods is to get more of those stocks trading above the top of their profile than the bottom. And right now, it's 117 above, 177 below. That's for the daily time frame. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, we've got 98 above, 180 below. So if you're wondering where all the jostling is coming from, it's really coming from the stocks with inside the S&P 500. That is why we've got this sort of choppy market. If we take a look at the NDX 100, we've got a whole different animal out here. And that animal says, I'm bullish for all of the time frames. Now, with regard to the daily time frame, it's 39 above and 32 below. So it's more than a smidgen, but it's not like it's, uh, you know, out in front by, you know, 10 lengths or something like that. But it still is bullish in the NASDAQ 100 across the board out there. So that's what we see when we take a look at market breadth. Well, what does all that mean out here? Well, let's go take a look at where price is trading. Let's not lose sight of the bigger picture, which is really right now just the daily time frame that we're looking at out here. And so 
Roger, with the ES Mini approaching the top of its consolidation pattern, approaching the top of its daily profile, which we know is where the sellers reside, with the Russell 2000, the bottom right-hand chart, making its way into the center of its bullish structured profile, that price closed below. So you and I know that if a counter trend move is going to end, it ends right here, right here being 1789. And knowing that the NASDAQ 100, now this chart doesn't show it, but you know it from listening to the shows, that today is going to complete a TD9 count top. So knowing that we've got three of those four at resistance, and I know that you like looking at the Dow, um, and the Dow's got a totally different message, but knowing that three of those four are up at resistance levels out here, I would never suggest that somebody enter a long position for some point in time uh, in the in the equity markets. Now, we could get tomorrow could be a different answer. And the reason why tomorrow could be a different answer is because the NQ Well, we'll just switch over right now. Um, yeah, let's uh, let me do this. Just trying to figure out the easiest way to do this. It's to. Um, yeah, I'm going to screw this up here. I'm just going to put the NQ right here. So the N, NQ, so we'll get, uh, oops, as soon as I can figure out how to type. And what we'll, what we'll see here, I'm interested in really the daily and the weekly time frames that are going to punch up on our screen. Now, I'm going to change screen so you guys can see it. I'm going to try to avoid that problem from yesterday. Apparently, I had some real brain farts going on. And very sorry about that. But now if we take a look at the NQ. So the, the issue and why things could change tomorrow, Roger, is because you've got a TD9 count top that's going to complete today for the daily time frame. And if price close above today's high, whatever that is tomorrow, this pattern gets negated. Tell us about a strong momentum move to the upside. Now, that could just be telling us that it wants to complete that move to 14,003, the one to one A to B equals CD. But on the weekly time frame, you can see we are also in the week the bar following bar number nine. So next week is where we really find out because if there's a close above this week's high next week inside of the NQ, that tells us about a strong, gigantic upward momentum move that we have in place. And that says we had higher most likely for quite some time. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that are not believers. So I did share this one chart with folks inside the Tiger's Den because we kind of get attuned, you know, to a simple mantra out here. And sometimes that mantra could be, for example, where is that chart? Um, Got to find it first. Uh, dollar higher, markets lower. I beg to differ with you. This is the chart right now. The top portion of this chart is the NASDAQ, is the NQ, the daily time frame. Right below that is the U.S. dollar index. And below that is the five-day correlation, about the shortest time frame correlation that I can come up with. When bars are above zero, it tells us about a directional correlation. When bars are below zero, it tells us about an inverse. You can see that prior to the yellow rectangle, we were, we were primarily in an inverse relationship. But things change. And really, since about the middle of March, the majority of the NASDAQ move up there is with a U.S. dollar moving higher. When this decouples like this, when this happens, this tells us about global capital coming into the market. We're not just there just yet. We'll know when global capital is coming into the market because what's going to move higher all at the same time is going to be the U.S. dollar, gold, and the equity markets. Don't don't ignore this part here. We are beginning to see that change of global capital flowing into the U.S. markets. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Uh, my apology, I forgot to change over screens. This is the uh, set of charts here that we were taking a look at, the upper portion being the NASDAQ, the NQ, the daily time frame, center portion being the uh, dollar, the portion down below is the correlation, looks at a five-day average. And again, we're seeing that correlation now change here. And, and we want to keep an eye on this because uh, that'll answer a lot of our question with regard to what the markets are doing and what their intent is. And because this is one that we would want to ride along when, in fact, it uh, it happens. So we've got a number of questions that have come in. So let's begin to get to those so we can get through all of these. We're going to change screens here. And uh, yesterday we went through I went through a dissertation, so to speak, on on semiconductor. Turns out that the real request was for O-N-O-N. -O -N. So Stevie kind of screwed that up yesterday. So we're going to do that. That's how we're going to kick it off. And that's for Tim. So we take a look at the uh, on holdings out here. We can see that yesterday price had uh, closed below its TD9 count breakout level of 29.33. So that suggests that this moves lower. Now today is bar number six. Looks like it's heading into this gap out here. So this gapped up, a nice strong move. It did volume on that uh, trading day of March 21st with 27 million shares. Yesterday, you pulled back with 13 million shares. So far today, you're at 4.5. You know, So we're about a 13 million share day out here. So it's coming back into this gap. It could be targeting 2080. Uh, but let's see what happens over the next several days out here. They could get a TD9 count bottom sometime midweek next week. And the reason why you could get that, don't know that we will, is right now you've got the weekly sitting at support. So it's a weekly bullish structured profile. And the support level or the bottom of that profile is at 2788. We're trading at 2785 as we speak right now. So it's possible that this acts as support. But to the extent that you get closes below this, Tim, that says lower price. So it's going to be this 2788-ish uh, area that you want to keep an eye on. I don't really have on a 30-minute time frame. I take that back. On a 30-minute time frame chart out here uh, with price sitting at a support level, we do have a roads momentum indicator bottom. So if this is support area is going to hold, you would presume that price would close above 2816. That's the top of the 30-minute profile. But watch today's low. If you get a close below that, that's going to add to the idea that 
we're headed lower into uh, next week, and maybe you get that uh, TD9 count uh, bottom pattern. So my apology for just focusing on, on semiconductor when you wanted on holdings, a totally different instrument. Let's go to the next request. That's from Greg. This also came in yesterday kind of late, and Greg wanted to take a look at Newmont Mining. Newmont Mining is in an A to B equals CD to the downside. Um, you can see that. Let me give you the uh, – let me just uh, calculate it on my other – system here. I'm not going to change screens because I tend to screw that up and I hate when that happens. So the one to one area, it's already hit. That was at 43.97. 42.28 is the 1 to 1.272. The point here, Greg, is that what you're looking for, I know you're looking for a bottom and you gave me a price area or what have you. Um, instead, what you want to wait for because of the A to B equals CD pattern is you want to wait for a bullish reversal candle. If you get that, then you have a buy the D point pattern. Now, the swing point that it's trading into has volume. This is March 9th of 5.2 million shares. So far today, you've done 3.5. So this is moving lower with volume accelerating likely going to go target that uh, swing area it means get at least in that 42.28 ish range now, on a weekly basis price is testing support it first is testing a, a weekly swing point that did volume of 34 million shares back in march this week so far we are at 28 million shares so on an average day uh, this does maybe about, um, you know, eight, nine million shares. So on the weekly, you're at 28. We're not through with the day. Maybe add 12. That gets us 28, 38, 40. Oh, wow. You're, this thing is pulling back in that swing point. It looks like with volume, that weekly swing point. Nonetheless, you do have support or potential support at 43.05. And on the monthly time frame, your potential support area is at the uh, 42.34 level. So with regard to Newmont Mining, it's pretty simple. Wait for a bullish reversal candle to confirm a buy the D point pattern on the daily time frame, and then you can consider taking a long position. So hope that helps you out, uh, Greg. Thanks so much for the request out there. Earlier, uh, I was in the den for a bit, and Fletch wanted to take a look at Palantir. PLTR is a ticker symbol. I figure if one person has a question, somebody else has got it as well. So let's take a look at this. This I suggested that uh, to flex the price is going to go target 1333 you can see that it's now taken out a swing point here of a large a to b equals cd to the upside it's taken that swing point. that swing point by the way had volume of 88 million shares so far today you've done 79 million shares we're only two hours into the trading day so you've got a confirmed a to b equals cd to the upside out here but 1333 is the weekly td9 count breakdown target area out there so i presume that that is really where this thing is headed to so that's on palantir uh snp had wanted to take a look at netflix inside the tiger's den so i think i've got that chart as well let's punch up netflix netflix also confirming an a to b equals cd to the upside it's a uh, top with a td9 count back here on April the 4th, it did it a TD9 count breakdown resistance, had that nice move lower. Uh, that swing point did volume of 3.2 million shares. So far today inside of Netflix, 9.7 million shares. Now, the A to B equals CD pattern takes us up towards the top of its weekly profile. So that's really its target, 379.43 out there. If it can close above 379.43, well, then we just take that A to B equals CD and do the 1.272 expansion. Now, what you sort of don't want to see Netflix do, believe it or not, is a close is tick above 314.30 during the month of May. If that happens, you're going to get a confirmed and completed TD nine count top. So. You know, that, that that's the good, the bad, and the ugly out there. But maybe that's really what's going to happen. We're going to get this completed A to B equals C to the upside. And then that's going to be a, a top, at least a short-term top, inside of uh, Netflix. So that's what's going on there, SNP. And uh, thanks so much for that request. Uh, the next request coming in, so we're going to go back to these charts here. And I'll just start over, which means I'm going to type in the uh, symbols now. So it'll take just a moment. SVRA, that's for our... Our expert inside the uh, Tiger's Den, uh, Dan. And so let's take a look at SVRA. Let's get this populated and uh, see what this is uh, doing. He was referring back to us taking a look at it before and needing to accomplish something. It's got a nice A to B equals CD to the upside out here. And it is running into an area of resistance that I'll show you on my other charts out here, Dan. But look, you, this, this wants to continue to move higher. Let me pull the charts back just a little bit, get a little bit more information. So this looks to me like this is going to go ahead 
for its uh, swing point. It's already testing it. So this is a daily swing point, Dan, from back on February 16th. The volume there was 301,000 shares. Today you've done 156. So price is moving into it with volume. And as long as price closes above 259, you're at 253 right now. I know my yeah, 253. If it closes above 259, you would close inside that swing point with volume. And then that would suggest a test of the high. And again, that high was out of the 285 mark. As we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, we pull this back just a tad. Where we don't have any resistance out here, price above its green oscillator and change line and the top of its profile out there. And on a monthly time frame, what can we see here? Not much. It's above resistance levels there, too. So everything looks good with regard to ticker symbol SVRA. That is Savara Inc. Now, you are in bar number three on a daily time frame of consecutive moves higher. What we can see out here is typically bars three and four are typically where the rally will stall. We have seen a, uh, we've seen quite a move out here with regard to SVRA. Um, but it looks very, very good. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back to this break. We want to take like YCS, DXJ, ABGO, and the Dow Equity Future Conference. Great. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, up, folks. Let's take a look at uh, requests that came in. Really, it's a two requests for for pretty much the same thing, which is the uh, Japanese yen. So I've, I'm going to switch screens here. Well, actually, okay, this has come up. Let me see if. Uh, okay, during the break, I had kind of screwed something up, but uh, all right. So we're 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 pretty good here. So uh, let's start with. So which one do I? Let me take a look at YCS first. I think we've got the same kind of pattern, do we? Um, ah, shoot, I shouldn't have changed it over just yet. Yeah, so during the break, I was trying to be cute and found out I wasn't really that cute when I when I hit a button out here. All right, so let's first, so where am I at? I am on the white background charts. So YCS, so we take a look at YCS. What we have is an A to B equals CD to the upside out here. And this is for being short the yen. You know, I'd really prefer to take a look at the yen. And then you had DXJ because I think we're going to get better information if we take a look at the uh, yen out here let me see if i can pull up those charts so give me a second if you would i guess you don't really have a choice uh trading where did i put the yen charts um should i put here we go so let's actually take a look at the yen charts it'll take a moment here for these to populate but this way we'll get the daily the weekly and that'll be better for you coda when you're trading either dxj or ycs uh, which are, I, I guess you're short, um, the uh, Japanese yen anticipating that it's weakening. Which is, uh, So let's go take a look at the chart patterns that are out here. I think this will assist you a little bit better. So just taking a few moments here to uh, populate. But there we go. So we take a look at the monthly chart, and I'll just start from the left as these things populate. So when we take a look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen um, for being short, so if this rises, it gets weaker. Um, it is traded above its uh, monthly oscillator and change line. So that is a... I'm going to call from these charts here. That's a bullish signal, meaning that the yen is going to continue to weaken against the U.S. dollar. When we look at the weekly time frame chart, we also see a pattern where prices trade above not just last week's high, which is bullish, but also above its green oscillator and change line. Uh, so that suggests that price could be targeting the 147.56 area. If we take a look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame says we don't have any kind of a top in place anytime soon. Well, I take that back. Oh, let me open this up. We do. We are in wave number seven, Coda. Uh, so that says you could get a wave seven top. And if we take a look at the last top that formed out here with regard on a daily time frame, for the Japanese yen, it was wave number seven as well. So we've got another one of those, but as you know, that doesn't complete until we get a lower high. So beware of that pattern. Short of that, price should continue to move higher, and where it should target is its daily TD9 count breakdown area. That's at 141.61. So if the wave seven top comes to fruition, but doesn't take hold, then that would be the area where price would head to 141.61. And as price gets up there, then you'd have to be, um, you know, take a look at whatever pattern might be going on, but that could be the end of the move. 30 minute chart says you've got a TD nine count top that's going to uh, confirm at 12 noon and complete at uh, 1230. Uh, the um, 60 minute negated its TD nine count top says you still have a strong weakening inside the yen. So I'll go with that one versus the 30 minute chart. Right now, another top signal. So the yen should continue to weaken. That'll put strength inside the uh, US dollar index. So I hope that helps you out both with regard to YCS and DXJ by simply Simply taking a look at the underlying instrument and getting the better signals. I do believe when we looked at DXJ, if I had looked at that code, I think that had a TD9 count top in it, which was the whole reason for me to, and, and DXJ didn't, and that was the whole reason to say, hey, let's go look at the currency. Let's not look at those ETFs out there. So um, hope that helps you out. The next question is from Mike. He wants to take a look at ABGO, ABGO. So give me a second here. Let's get to a different set of screens. Okay, and here I'm just going to have to start punching this in one at a time. So sorry about the delay that we'll have here as this populates, but let's uh, let's get this in here. And I think one of the other things that we'll try to do, I think we'll have time, is we'll go take a look at the, at least those top 10, maybe top, or top 8, maybe top 16 uh, charts inside of the NDX 100. And Broadcom, ABGO, uh, is one of those. And having a heck of a nice day, and it's trading above the top of its weekly profile. It's taking that, so it's going to go take on this uh, swing high here on a monthly basis from back in December 2021. That high out there is 677.76. The volume there was 60 million shares. Now on a monthly basis, you know, we're, we're not we're not near the end of the month. It's 24 million. So 24 is going against 60. It seems light in its loafers. So the question will be, you know, can it overcome that swing high? And again, that swing high is going to be 677. 
uh, 76. And that's where it's headed to. No topping signals or anything along those lines with regard to a Broadcom. Um, whether it's a 30-minute chart that I look at, no, no anything. Yeah. Um, so it uh, looks like Abgo Broadcom, one of the top eight, I believe, from a weighting structure inside the NDX 100. I think it might be the eighth weighting in there. Uh, it looks looks bullish, but running into that resistance, not that much fire higher up. But but everything is really quite bullish out there. So, Mike, I hope that that helped you out. Uh, Roger wanted to take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract, the short term time frame. So let's pull this up here. What I've got right now is the ES Mini. Um, yeah, shoot. Probably shouldn't have hit that button. Oh, well. Things happening for us, not to us. Uh, although in that instance, it kind of happened to me. So uh, uh, just as long as we're here on the uh, ES Mini from a short-term standpoint, you do have a TD9 count top on the 10-minute. That's about it, folks. Everything here looks pretty good. Prices get towards the top of that consolidation. No idea whether it will break through that level. 4206 being a real key level of resistance. So let's see what we see when we take a look at the Dow charts out here. So let's get those things to uh, populate. Um, but uh, uh, yo, you're welcome there, uh, Coda. Um, what if you have time? Da, 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 da. Okay. So let's take a look at this. So now we take a look at the Dow equity future contracts. So on the daily time frame, Dow is struggling here which it really shouldn't be if we've got global capital moving in. But it is struggling at that oscillator and change line. That print is at 33,533. Let me make sure I've got proper movement here. Um, yeah, I do. 33,461 is where we're trading right now. So uh, you've done a five-hour chart. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Price finding resistance at the top of its profile, 33,564. CD9 count on the 15 minute just ran up into resistance where it had a road to So you just got a choppy consolidating, short term consolidating uh, market out here. Um, not really much else for me to uh, provide uh, to you out there. What I would really be focused on is not the Dow charts. You've heard this before T today. I'd be focused on the NQ charts. No, you got a daily and a weekly completed. TD9 count pattern that is going to uh, complete today. Let's go to our next request out here. The next request coming in from Nicholas, coming in by email. So let's get back to those uh, three panel charts out here. And Nicholas wants to take a look at the SMHs. So let me, uh, not Sam H, SMH. There we go. So let's actually get over and read Nicholas's question. The question goes like this. Would you go over SMH? Where's resistance now? Do you see a pullback? Thanks and have a terrific Thursday. And Mike, your question was, where is resistance levels on ABGO? So I've given that to you. Mike, uh, from Mike, who was in Ecuador, but now in Palermo, Italy. Oh, now that's pretty cool, Mike. Thanks. You know, my, my wife and I almost booked a trip there. Uh, next Saturday, not this coming Saturday, next Saturday, we leave for a three-week international vacation. Italy is one of the places we're headed to. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So Nicholas had written in. He was asking, where is resistance for the um, SMHs out here? And that's a pretty easy one, uh, Nicholas. The next level of resistance, I'll give you two of them. The next level is 140.03, and 140.03 is the top of the monthly profile. And just above that at 145.18 is its TD9 count breakdown level. So that's really the next area um, for the SMHs. Price has taken out a weekly swing point. That weekly swing point was March uh, 31st and the volume there was 39 million shares and so far this week we are at 20.7 million shares so let me see on my other screens what's the average daily uh, SMH so on an average daily basis we typically see volume of around six seven million shares so on a weekly basis again the numbers were 39 and right now we are at 20 so it looks like this is going to be light volume, but nonetheless, you close above it, you continue to move higher, you close above resistance. And so that 140.03, 145.18 is a target. And there's no daily signal, no, no daily time frame signal of any kind of a top or anything along those lines out there. So that's where price is likely headed to. Nicholas, I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. SNP inside the Tigers, they wanted to take a look at the IWM. So we've got those charts up here on our screen. Right now, the the issue really with regard to the IWM, and it, you can't visually pick it up here, so I'm just simply going to switch over. Here's the daily time, but just to show you the difference between trading the ETF or the underlying instruments. In this case here, the underlying instrument is the equity future contract. So now we go take a look at that. So this message here, if I were just to look at the IWM, just look at the IWM S&P, what would we say? We'd say, shoot. Yesterday, you closed above the top of its daily profile, and you're above it today. That says we are in a bullish mode. That there's a breakout that's going on. And that's how you would interpret that chart, and that would be a correct and accurate interpretation. However, Stevie says, not so fast, because we know better than that. And so to know better than that, to really look at the IWM, we've got to go take a look at this chart here. And this chart is the bottom one, but we're going to just simply expand it out. And the issue here is that so far the rally inside the Russell 2000 has run into resistance right where you would expect it to if it is only a counter trend move. And S&P, that is the center of its bullish structured profile. When you close below a bullish structured profile and you do it for two consecutive sessions, then where counter trend rallies will run into resistance. And this gives us an unfair advantage, doesn't it? Because we know 
how these markets react. We don't know whether they'll get through these resistance levels, but it gives you an unfair competitive advantage out there. And that's at the price point of 1789. If price is able to close above 1789, then the underlying instrument, the future contract will then say, just like we had the ES mini, Remember the ES mini, we'll go take a look at that bullish structured profile. Once you close above the center of that bullish structured profile for two consecutive sessions, what is it communicating to us? That price wants to get up to the top of the profile, which is 1814. If it's going to do that, it's likely going to get to the top of its consolidation. So it's not the IWM charts that are important to SNP. I believe it's really this chart here that's important. And the level for you to be watching whichever side of the trade you're on or looking to get on, watch 1789. We get two consecutive closes above that. Odds favor move to that 1814, maybe get up to the uh, 1827 level. And here's the ES mini. Here's the upper. I'll just simply expand out this chart as well. Here you can see that it's the blue lines that are the daily profile. The green lines are the weekly. And you can see bullish structure profile. Now we're getting up towards the top of its uh, pattern out there. So the only... Uh, so that's what I see when I take a look at the IWM. Now I know you also wanted to take a look at uh, natural gas. So you wanted to look at the UNG. I'm not going to do that. We're going to go take a look at the actual natural gas chart. So let's do this here. Let me pull those up. Natural, I'm going to pull up these charts for the UNG. There we go. So we'll get both. And we'll actually get boy will pop up here too. So you're going to get the uh, June contract, the weekly June contract for natural gas. We're rolling over, I believe it's next week into July. So we'll have to update these charts here. Um, right now, with regard to natural gas on a weekly basis, you got to love it. We have a change in trend. We have an absolute change in trend signal. Now, how does Stevie conclude that? I conclude that by taking a look at the oscillator and change line. We can see how this is cap price for quite some time out here. And this week, and well, I mean, tomorrow could obviously, we could see all these gains you know, disappear. But right now, at this stage of the game, you've got a change in trend signal, and you've got a TD nine count bottom pad that's in place for the weekly time frame. The daily time frame has a road momentum indicator uh, signal out here, and that's been confirmed. But as you can see, today will now confirm a TD nine count top. And that suggests that today or tomorrow should be a short-term top inside of natural gas out there. Now, it's possible that the top of the daily profile that is trading above $2.42 will become support, old resistance becoming new support. Now, it is a bearish structured profile. So let's say you're not in a natural gas trade and you want to get into it, knowing that you've got a daily TD nine count pattern that is about to unfold here. What do you do? Well, the real buy would be getting back and pulling back to $2.28. This is a bearish structured profile. If price can close above the top of the profile for two consecutive sessions, then any pullback, you would expect a counter trend move to then find support there at about 228. With regard to UNG uh, and uh, Boyle, uh, Boyle is going to become bar number eight today. UNG is going to have bar number nine today. But again, it's really the underlying instrument, the equity future contract that we want to keep an eye on and focus on. So I hope that helps you out, S&P, both for IWM and uh, UNG natural gas out there. Let's go to our next request, which is a take a look at Goldilocks. So for that, we're going to go ahead and pull up the actual detailed charts as well. It's going to take a moment for these charts to populate. Here we'll get the eight panel. What we are going to see out here is uh, we're going to see that uh, a TD9 count pattern, perhaps on the daily time frame, that is unfolding. So all is not necessarily lost with regard to gold moving lower. And gold right now is trading down a total of, uh, what, uh, $27, trading out at 1957. Now, what gold is doing, it is testing. I, the bottom of a consolidation area out here. Uh, I don't think it's going to show up on my daily uh, chart right here on this screen, uh, which is which is just fine because what we can see here, oh, it does show up. Okay, good. So you'll see that today is going to become bar number seven. So we could get a TD nine cow bottom pattern between tomorrow, Friday, and Tuesday of next week. And that's happening at the same time that gold is pulling back to a potential level of support, and that would be the bottom of its weekly profile. And that number is 1945.50. So as price pulls back to that, we could get a TD9 count bottom uh, for the uh, daily time frame. What happens if price closes below 1945? Um, uh, out there. Well, and that could be suggesting lower price as well. Where would be the next lower price area? That would be the monthly oscillator and change line. 
And that's currently in the 1922.30 level. Now, on a 30-minute time frame, if you're an intraday trader, now would be the time to take a long position in gold. Why is that? Because we have a TD nine count bottom. So that formed at 11.30. We're having a little bit of follow through right now during this half hour session. And what Goldilocks should do is at least bounce up to 1963.50. Now, don't quote me right out to the penny out there. Price is going to move up or down uh, as price, uh, that line is going to move up or down as price moves up and down. But in theory, what price should do is move up and tag that oscillator and change line. Now, that could be the extent of its rally. That I don't know. I would say more likely than that, that could be the extent of its rally. Knowing that price is trading down below the bottom of that consolidation pattern. It's only that time frame, by the way, the 30 minutes that we've got a bottom pattern signal. Steve Rhodes with TFN. So Duke, I hope that helped you out with regard to Goldilocks. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. I'm going to my screen set here. We're going to go take a look at IONQ. This is for uh, Mimi. And uh, Mimi, uh, let's see here. Your question. Can I find your question? Where did it go? Mimi, uh, please look at entry for an entry point. Well, you've got a, a TD9 count top that is in place today. Uh, it was it completed yesterday, and the question is, will this close above nine dollars and fifteen cents? If price closed above nine dollars and fifteen cents, the next run is up to nine ninety five. That would be the bottom of its monthly profile. So I can't suggest that you even take a momentum trade here. You need to wait for some type of pullback or retracement. I don't have anything to. Well, we've got that TD nine count top that might suggest that happens. So if this closed below nine fifteen. 
seen. Your entry area to be considering is probably around seven dollars and forty eight cents out there. Price close above this. This wants to move higher, and nine ninety five would be the uh, mark out there. So uh, uh, hit me up on a, a pullback out there, and uh, let's see if we can find some type of short term time frame pattern that is out there. Uh, we're going to take a look at the GDX. This is coming from Hector. And Hector's asking, where's the GDX headed to? Well, today's bar number seven of its TD9 count series. So Hector likely headed to 3074. 3074 is a TD9 count breakout area. Price is below the bottom of its weekly profile. That suggests moving lower. 3056 happens to be the uh, monthly oscillator and change line. So we're going with the price target area of 3056 to 3074 as being in the uh, next target area for the uh, GDX. Lastly, let's go take a look at some of those NDX100 charts. I'm going to have to change panels. The first ones that are going to pop up on your screen, though, right here. These are the second tier of eight. And on the second tier of eight stocks for inside the NDX 100, it's only AMD that has a TD9 count pattern. Otherwise, the other ones want to move higher. Let's go take a quick peek here at the top eight and see which ones have got signals out there for us to pay attention to. With regard to Microsoft, well, it needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. Apple is uh, trading above its Rhodes Mentum indicator top signal, but it does have wave number seven potential for a top. Uh, Amazon is in the bar following bar number nine if it's high up today gets taken out tomorrow that tells you about a strong momentum move nvidia no top out there google's going to form bar number nine says it could form a top between today and tomorrow tesla no top in pattern out there uh, pepsi wants to go to 187.50 and nothing for broadcom as we took a look at it so a mixed bag not exactly the signal that the nasdaq is getting ready to top out even though it's got that daily td9 count folks we'll see you tomorrow have a terrific thursday